What is up guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Before we get started, Merry Christmas. Hopefully you guys had a good holiday period. I just took a few days off there to, you know, just chill, enjoy the holiday period myself, and now we're going to get back into the swing of videos. Um, yeah, before we get started, I also want to draw your attention to the sponsored series I did with Ride 3. I did two videos, uh, the first of which I did uh, with sport bikes and was just uh, having a f like fun time with that, doing you know, street races and stuff, and then in the second video, I did a night race at Macau. So if you want to go, if you guys want to check out those videos, link in the description. I'll leave a card annotation on screen. But uh, let's get on with this now. The career mode, episode number two for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Let's do it. The magnificent Bahrain International Circuit sits majestically in the desert, situated just 30 kilometers from the capital, Manama. Welcome to the Bahrain Grand Prix, where practice is about to get underway. Sit rep, we've got a leak in the hydraulic system, so it's going to be a few minutes before we can get you out on track. Fantastic. Welcome guys to episode number two. You can see, starting off with FP1, another technical issue, and again, Coincidence, Arab is there just chilling on the front left tire. I wonder if that has anything to do with things. But Claire Williams, she had a bit of a chat with me early on in the weekend. She told me about a, a sponsor uh, agreement. They said that if we score points at any point in this season, then we'll have Martini on board as a sponsor. So um, the car will be changing. It'll be a little bit more what you used to in real life, how it has the red stripe on the car. So. I'll be mega motivated to get some points and the car will look just that much nicer. We also introduced my uh, Williams helmet as well, but it seems to be a little bit glitched out. But you'll see that later. It's time for quali. Let's do it. The cars are ready. The drivers are ready. We hope you're ready as qualifying is about to begin here in Bahrain. All right, so here we are for qualifying the first serious session of the weekend. Coming into this round, we did one upgrade. It was uh, weight reduction, I believe, and that has gone on the car. Thankfully, it, we weren't turned down with that. It didn't get rejected or fail or whatever else. Um, we should see a small boost in performance uh, versus what we showed in Melbourne. So we'll see what we can do. Um, you guys know if you've played this game regularly that Bahrain is the most difficult circuit on the F1 calendar to, to match it with the AI. TRL Limitless did a video quite recently. He's an esports driver, one of the best in the world by making it to the pro draft and even he can't match it pound for pound with uh, cars of equal performance on 110 AI around the circuit. You guys know this. This is absolutely insane. And being the slowest car, we don't have any natural pace advantage over anyone. We, we're only like on level footing with Lance Stroll. So it could be easily the case that we finish last here and finish last by a long way. So this will be the most testing Grand Prix of career mode I've ever had in, what, seven, eight years of making career mode videos. This will be right up there with, I think, Baku at um, season one of F1 2017 when I was in the McLaren Honda and no upgrades were applying to my car, but they were applying to other teams. If you guys remember that, that was a real struggle at the, st at the start of season one. I don't know what my voice was doing there, but yeah. Don't be surprised if we finish last, even in the race. But I'm going to give this uh, my best approach, if we can. So far, this lap has been really amazing in qualifying. Uh, the laps that I put in so far, you know, were solid. But this one has just been another level. Four and a half tenths up as we go through the middle sector. Using all the entry spades. I'm using all the, the tricks in the trade here to try and just drag an extra couple of tenths uh, out of this car. And that might be the difference between us qualifying last or maybe getting, like, 18th. At the end of the day... It's not going to make the biggest of differences. Uh, we're still going to be towards the back five and a half tenths up as we go through the final uh, corner now. Again, trying to use up all the entry space uh, to, okay, you know, get the best exit possible up to the line. Overtake mode is engaged. Perfectly used the ERS deployment modes, but it's still not enough. It was last place and last place by a long way. I think it was six tenths to last stroll. Six tenths to the nearest car. Well, this race is going to be much more difficult than I was anticipating. We'll have a tire advantage maybe in the race. So anyone doing a two-stop might fall into our clutches. But 
We'll see. Obviously, I expected a better session, but these things happen from time to time. Try to make up for it in the race. There's something in the Bahrain air tonight, and I'm not just talking about the sand. Our brightest minds have thrust their brightest ideas into the spotlight of the Sakia circuit this evening as we look ahead once more to a Grand Prix that has thrilled us so consistently in the past. A warm welcome to Anthony Davidson, who's beside me in the commentary box today. Let's talk briefly about Marcus Ericsson. That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position, edging out Raikkonen, he'll start P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Bottas, Charles Leclerc and Ricardo, Verstappen, Hülkenberg, Perez and Carlos Sainz, Ocon, Gasly, Brendan Hartley and Van Dorn, Magnussen, Alonso, Roman Grosjean and Lance Stroll, Mr. Monaco and Marcus Ericsson rounds off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Keep your eyes open on the run to turn one and keep it clean. We want to come out in one piece. Good luck. All right, here we are on the grid of the Bahrain Grand Prix. Oh, I don't know if I'm looking forward to this or not. This is going to be the biggest challenge I have ever undertaken. And, you know, I, I brought this on myself. I, you know, I said I'm not challenged enough, and here you go. You've got the ultimate challenge now. See what you can do. I mean, if we score points, if we score points in this Grand Prix, I don't know what I'll do. I think I think this is greater than winning a, 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 a race in league racing. I don't know, winning a championship? This would be quite the underdog story. But we're going to do... The one stop, softs to mediums. It's going to be near enough to eight seconds faster than the two stop. So this could bring us into the game, but our pace might be nowhere. Five red lights, and away we go for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Harder compound than most people around us. Ericsson got a grid penalty, which demoted him down to last, and he's off like a rocket ship, off the line, challenging my teammate and the Haas is heading into turn one. He gets boxed in by Alonso and Grosjean. We see if we can slide up his inside into turn one. That's pretty pointless, isn't it? But it is still last place in this Bahrain Grand Prix. Now is the, the true test. Can we stay with the AI in race conditions? We are nowhere near their pace in terms of one lap pace, but we've got good tire wear upgrades. My consistency is usually pretty good. I can usually fight a little bit more in the races. There's more grip on the circuit, which brings the player into it a little bit more. The AI might be battling like they're doing now, and getting bottled up like Ericsson is. We go up his inside, and that is P19 for the taking. That could be a pretty uh, pointless move as we make a small mistake into the fast uh, right-hander into the third sector, and Ericsson is all over us. So that was pretty short-lived. Probably best if we just let him go. Settle in behind him in the slipstream and wait for him to make the moves and force the overtakes. And that might give us half a chance to overtake the cars in front. So we'll have to wait and see. But early doors, it was very, very difficult to, to even stay with the AI. That You can see that they're battling quite clearly. But even still, I'm not ranging up onto them like I'd expect. And now that things are settling down here on lap three, they're actually pulling away. They are, The mid-pack is pulling away. Oh, despite <laughs> despite battling, despite me having a clear run and, and, and pushing as much as I can, Grosjean, I think, is out of the Grand Prix. So that's a free position for us. So at least we won't be finishing technically last in this Grand Prix. But we're still going to be last of the runners who are still in this race. This is a weird feeling for me. And given that we just put the number one on the car, this is far from a champion's drive. But I'm not going to give up. I'm going to hope that... Say, uh, well, a safety car comes out, that'll really um, spice things up at the back end of the race if that can um, help me out, but Team Radio. Alonso ahead, gap to car in front is 4.0 seconds. We're slower by 9 tenths a lap. Oh wow, 9 tenths a lap slower, that is quite the margin. I'm hoping that tire wear brings me into this later on in the stint uh, and we can start to close in these guys, but in terms of raw pace, we just don't have it today. Um, so we're just going to have to do what we can. The two McLaren Hondas. Oh no, sorry, McLaren Renaults, shall I say. 
getting caught up with F1 2017 career mode. I apologize. These two going side by side. That might allow me to catch up. Lewis Hamilton has already made a stop in this Grand Prix, so he'll be overtaking us in pretty much no time at all. But yeah, first stint was just the car was feeling very lethargic. It wasn't really responding that well. Bahrain has got a lot of um, slow speed corners, which doesn't exactly lend itself too well to the Williams, given the uh, wheel spin that this car has naturally with its imbalance in the chassis. So had to be a little bit cautious with uh, planting my right foot, but otherwise, it, it just I don't know, it's just not gelling this weekend. We overtake Hulkenberg, who comes out of the pits uh, on his fresh super soft tires. It'll only be a matter of time before he gets us again. But uh, yeah, here he goes around the outside. I mean, rich and high uh, fuel, um, fuel mixture and ERS deployment, but that's still not enough, which is crazy. So, Hulkenberg takes back P15. We're still circulating as we are 10 laps into this race. I think we'll be stopping around like lap 13-ish, putting on the mediums, and then running to the end. So, we'll see how that plays out for us. Again, I'm just hoping for a safety car to bail us out. But, um, I don't think I've showed this, but I, I had a deeper look at where this car lacks and where it lacks even more. I was going to say what the strengths and weaknesses are. This car has no strengths. Apart from maybe the fact that it's really responsive in qualifying even though my qualifying results haven't shown to be the case this car is a good qualifying car we just need more natural pace um, the area that we actually like the most in this car is engine related that's Lance Stroll out of the Grand Prix unfortunately so we're down to 18 runners in this Grand Prix we're gonna be pitting in for our medium tires yeah so I looked at the upgrades that the Williams team have done in the first two seasons of career mode I think um, chassis-wise and uh, aero-wise, the team have done it like at least 50 or 60% in terms of upgrades, but the, the engine department is only like less than 20% done, so there's a lot to be found in terms of the engine power here. And I did notice that we were getting overtaken ridiculously easy around Australia and here as well. This is a big power track. Uh, no wonder we're struggling so much. This is Magnus now re overtaking me. He had a, a poor start to this from Free. I think he's doing a two stop, maybe. I'm not too sure how he's lost track position to us, but now he is claiming it back here on lap 16 of this Bahrain Grand Prix. Did you guys see the pit stop, by the way, about a minute or two ago? These guys are so good at their pit stops that it almost catches me out that I'm not ready to get going again. Uh, such is the speed of these guys, but we'll, um, hopefully they, they can apply that to the car and making that a bit more speedy. But uh, we got back on Magnussen, a nice little counter-attack into turn four, and uh, now he is back on the attack. He's got DRS. I'm really having to manage the ERS to make sure that we don't deplete ourselves fully. We've still got 12 laps to go in this Grand Prix, and the more battling we do, the even further back we fall in this Grand Prix. Not that that matters. I just want to make sure that I don't finish last in this Grand Prix, to be honest. Up the inside again into turn four. Magnussen has a bit more track position this time. I didn't quite get the drive, and uh, Magnussen holds on to P17. So I think he might hold on to that now as we lose the back end and just have a pretty wayward middle sector. So we'll uh, have to pray for a, uh, a good run through the second and third sector and a bit of DRS to help us out, but it's no, it's no use. Magnussen pretty much built out a second uh, about a lap later, and that was that in terms of that battle. So 10 laps to go on this Grand Prix at this point. I'm really just hoping for a safety car to bring me into the game because what I do is I pit in, put on a fresh set of super soft tires and hope that that is enough to cover off my pace and I can charge towards the guys inside the points. But as this Grand Prix ticks on, our chances of getting points now, getting a safety car are dwindling. And even now, if we do get a safety car, we're only moments away from getting a lap. So... If we get lapped, that is pretty much game over for us in terms of our hopes and dreams in this Grand Prix. Here comes Leclerc. He's got the Slipstream. He's got the DRS. I'm still in rich and high fuel mixture, by the way. And he slides up the inside pretty much effortlessly and shoves us off the circuit. So that is our chances of scoring points today out the window. Here's the replay. Slides up the inside. I think the squeeze was a bit much. There was no way I was going to come back around the outside there. I just didn't have the one, the momentum, the okay, some information on Magnuson. They have an issue with their car. They're going to be slow. Ooh. Well, that changes things. We might not finish last in this Grand Prix, but yeah, I don't know what the squeeze was for. Maybe a bit of bad blood between myself and Leclerc just showing me 
the big mistake that I've made by switching to this team. I'm not sure, but it's now the last lap of the Grand Prix for me, being a lap down. Uh, Magnussen has some kind of issue. I don't know what it is. I looked at it on the replay. It wasn't front wing. doesn't have a puncture, so it's something else at play. But even still with his problem, we're only slightly catching him, and he's going to get away with 17th place in this race. Leclerc wins the Grand Prix, sets the fast slap on the last lap as well to further add to the domination. It's a Sauber 1-2. And for Williams, it is an absolutely horrid day. 18th and 19th. Again, no points. Not good enough. Not good enough at all. Let's push harder next time, okay? Thanks, man. The engineering department is not happy. You know, clearly they have high expectations, and so they should. We uh, have dreams of being a contending team again. I'm not going to say we're going to win championships, but I'd love to be in a better position than what we are in currently. It's 18th place. Lance had the DNF, as you guys saw. We just never had the pace. Um, Consistency-wise, we, we got better as the stints wore on, especially in that medium stint. There was a, a point halfway through where the pace just, like, switched on. And uh, I, I felt like there wasn't so much of a pace disadvantage to the other guys, but I, I'd already lost way too much time at the start of the Grand Prix and in the early phase of the medium stint that there was nothing much that I could do there. But uh, yeah, it's 18th place. This was going to be a difficult Grand Prix. I knew that from the outset. We didn't have things go our way. And uh, yeah, that's just the result, I suppose. In terms of the expectation from the team, we had a short-term goal of finishing in 14th place. We just missed out on that in Australia by literally a meter. Uh, so that's 600 resource points we won't be getting today, but we still have a thousand in the bank Which we might spend towards the chassis today. So uh, if you look at the bottom of the screen, we can uh, do an error upgrade I think it's drag reduction. Uh, that was a foul upgrade in between season two and three So we do have that up our sleeve. I would have loved to have done the major uh, weight reduction for the monocoque of the car But uh, it's just too expensive. We're short by like 100 points. So we're gonna have to delve into the minor Weight reduction upgrade, and hopefully uh, that can be enough to boost us towards some points in China. Which, speaking of China, is one of the more easier tracks on the F1 calendar to mix it with the AI. So we might have an advantage there. So we'll have to wait and see an upgrade going on the car. The AI becoming slightly less OP should make for a pretty balanced Grand Prix. I'm going to give it my all, see what we can do. Tire strategy is pretty interesting there, given that the Ultras are like two stop, two steps softer than the other two compounds so it could bring us into the race even more so than what it did today but that's his race for today hopefully you guys enjoyed the bahrain grand prix it's not too often you see me struggle uh as much as what you've seen today but there you go that's what it looks like in a williams that is supremely underdeveloped versus the rest of the field uh on a level though i'm really looking forward to uh, building this car up and and, and slowly, you know, ticking off every team that we overtake on the uh, the path to glory once again. But that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more F1 2018 content. Uh, the next race is the Chinese Grand Prix, where hopefully we can be in the fights for the first time in this career. Until then, I'll see you next time.